day friends and welcome to our program. This is Light in Your Way, coming to you from Covenant Boreman Church here at 127 Monines Road, Kingston 20. This family-focused, community-oriented church where we confess and believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, in God as our Father, and the Holy Spirit as our Sanctifier, and believe and affirm that the Bible is the Word of God and our supreme rule of faith. Welcome to our program today as we share a word about intentional faith development. Join me in reflection on the word from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of us but to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God? Would you stay tuned, listen to the sweet voice of Miss, Mrs. Althea McKenzie singing, God and God alone. things we cannot deny is that we live in a world of that has requirements so in the first instance we don't just get up and get a job or we're employed to a school or to uh, or, uh, as I listened to Lowell re read that lesson I thought some nobody is more appropriate than him could read that lesson or our sister Nicolette a case being presented by the Lord <laughs> and, and words like accusation and and have a charge to bring against you uh, to love but the but but whatever it is when, when we when we are seeking a job or an employment certainly 
There are particular qualifications we have to bring to the table, don't we? we, we when you go to an interview, people judge your attitude, your deportment, one's expectations. What is your job description? So there are requirements that are necessary when we talk about our job or our employment, when we speak about our spouse or our significant other. Amen? There are particular qualities we are looking for, don't we? Eh? Even those who are not yet married. There are particular qualities we are looking for. A particular kind of attitude. Perhaps a particular kind of intellectual capacity we are looking for. When we talk about looking for a partner to, to spend our lives with. When we talk about children and their rights and privileges. They have to meet particular requirements to enjoy a certain level of right and responsibility. Not true? Yes. So, I mean, in, in, in serious homes, they have to gain the trust of their parents before they can get a key. Does you? Before they can let in themselves and let out themselves. Right, Judith? That there's a particular kind of responsibility that we are looking for in our children for them to enjoy the privileges in whatever sphere of life we get into. We have to admit that there are requirements that are necessary. When we reflect on God and our spiritual journey, we have to raise the important question regarding God's requirements, don't we? Throughout scripture, people of God have searched and have sought to fulfill God's requirements for them and for their lives and for the people of their time. Listen to the wise man in Ecclesiastes 11 verse 13. Having God having revealed his requirements to him. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Isn't that God's requirements? Talk to me, man. Yes. yes. Listen to the expert in the law who asked Jesus, which is the greatest commandment? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with your entire being and love your neighbor as yourself. Isn't that Christ's requirements? Isn't that the requirement of God? Yes. Friends, we have sought to infuse into today's word some of our beliefs and Moravians, and I, I lift up two here. Moravians believe in God as Father, Jesus Christ as Savior, and the Holy Spirit as Sanctifier. So for one to call themselves a true Moravian, to meet a requirement, one of those requirements that we believe in the Trinity, not in Jesus only, but in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We acknowledge the Bible as the word of God and the rule of faith. So that it is out of the word of God, the Bible, that we get the requirements for our lives. We don't pick these from out the sky as they suit us. We don't process life as Moravians and proceed in life designed to follow our own dictates and our own rules. But rather, the Moravian church declares that the Bible is the word of God. And it is in the Bible that we encounter God's requirements for our lives. Not in the word of Bishop Clark. Not in the word of the preacher, the PC, or the, or the synod. But in the word of God, we find God's requirements for our lives. Did I hear an amen? amen. Michael also raises this issue about God's requirements. Michael was a prophet of the downtrodden and exploited people of the Judean society. He prophesied during a time of great social injustice and boldly oppose those who impose their power upon the poor and the weak for their own selfish gains. What does the Lord require of us? Amazingly, God puts a case to the people. And, having, and, and when he begins in, in, it, in, in Micah chapter 6, he talks about how they must, he's going to stand up and plead his case. And others must listen. And then he goes on to talk about all that he has done. He brought you out of Egypt 
took you through the wilderness into the promised land so that when he brings this case against the people he wants to declare that he has met his own requirements so that it is those people the Israelites who have failed in meeting God's requirements for their lives what does the Lord require of us and the answer comes as a threefold response. One, we must act justly. In other words, we must act with fairness, honesty, and integrity. Michael had a special concern for justice, you know, because during his time he saw so little of it. What God requires of us is that we do what is right and fair in our relationships with each other. Justice involves the sense of a standard of equality and equity among people. Friends, and many times we talk about justice, you know, we think of only the big things, like the big cases in court, or the big things. But it, it, is, it can be as simple or as large as we may anticipate it. It is being honest in even the smallest routine business transaction. We must be just and honest and fair. As simple as going, reporting to work on time, fulfilling the duties of your responsibility at your workplace, and don't spend your day talking on the phone but occupying yourself doing work so you receive a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. But in Micah, interestingly, the prophet complained about how the people use, listen now, in Micah 6 verse 11, they use dishonest scales with a bag of false ways, weights. So they were like, like, Higglers and others, they, they adjusted the scale so that the weight on the scale show more than it actually is. So, there's an old saying, honesty is the best policy. But for the Christian I want to declare today, honesty is the only policy. You see, there's a consistent theme throughout our scripture. That we are called to be a people of fairness and integrity in all our dealings. Here's Psalm 51 verse 6. You desire truth in the inward parts. Here, Proverbs 4.23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring all the issues of life. Friends, we must settle this matter deep in our hearts, that we are to be a people of integrity and to be on guard in the battle to act justly. So Michael says, there are three things God requires. One is to act justly. Amos 5.24 says, let justice roll down like a river and righteousness like a never failing stream. Hear what the Moravians believe. That we must seek to avoid in our daily dealings, covetousness, dishonest practice in trade, and willful debt as these are hindrances to the life of a Christian. Would you hear that? Did I, did I, did I say the more eventually believes what the Bible teaches? Yes! So don't borrow money you can't pay! You see, we have put it nicely, but that's what it really means. We must not be covetous of other people's things. We must not engage in dishonest practices. And we must not borrow people's money that we know we can't pay back. So, Michael says, we must act justly. In our talk about others, we must be just and fear. In our engagements, in our, you see, the, the, you see, what Michael is hitting at, you know, is that here were people who were offering burnt offerings and sacrifices to God, but their lives were a mess. So these are people who live, who live uh, disconnected lives, segmentalized. 
that their lives, uh, this was their worship life and this was their everyday life. This was their Sunday life or their church life and this was their work life. And here comes God. No, you can't disconnect these. We are whole human beings and our conduct when we gather in God's sanctuary must be matched with our conduct and integrity in our daily lives. We must act justly. The second thing Michael says, which is really a balance, you know, <laughs> is that we must love mercy. It's to fill our hearts with compassion and kindness toward one another. The Hebrew, Hebrew word Michael uses here is, is a rich one. Translated mercy, tender mercies, loving kindness, and steadfast love. It's a word used most often in a covenantal sense. This is the richness of it now. In a covenantal sense. It involves the attitude of two parties who are in covenant relationship with one another. And that can't be more powerfully presented than in the church of Jesus Christ. For when we come to, to, to the knowledge of God and come to serve God, we are in a covenant relationship with God. And that implies that we are also in a covenant relationship with one another. That's why we have to love mercy. I'm rushing on because I want to make the point that this, this love mercy you know, is a balance of justice. For we can't talk about God's justice in the friends. You know that? We can't talk about God's justice. For we cannot manage God's justice. But justice means that I do to you what you deserve. You get it? Yes. So that if we were to talk about God's justice, none of us would be alive today. For God were to meet out to us what we deserve to get. Let God help us. So that's why the, the prophet Micah not only talks about that we must act justly, but we must love mercy. Notice, it is not that we must have mercy, no. It is that we must love mercy. For there's a difference between the two. One is to say that I act out of kindness to you, out of obedience or compulsion. I'm doing this to you because, well, I mean, I have no choice. But when I say I love mercy, what I'm saying is that this is not now an activity because somebody has mandated it to be. This is something I want to do. This is something I love to do. And I'm going to love mercy. You see, mercy, you know, is the unexpected act that we do. It is, it is not to do to the person what the person deserves, but to extend beyond the person's deserving, to extend the mercy of God. Are you with me? So in the parable of the Good Samaritan, it is the one considered least likely, the Samaritan, who offered help to the man who was sick. One of the fascinating things about this, one of the fascinating things about this text, you know, is that Jesus was telling this parable about when they asked him, who is my neighbor? And talks about the Pharisee and the priest and the Samaritan who, were, was, who passed this man by the wayside. And after he told the story, he then said to them, who is the neighbor in this story? You know what they say? The one who offered help. They couldn't even say the Samaritan man. He said the one who offered help. <laughs> Can't call him by name, you know. I mean, the Samaritans and the Jews were so opposed to each other that the, the, the Jews couldn't even say the Samaritan. He said the one who offered him. The, the, you see, the parable of the prodigal son reveals to us the heart of a father who accepted his son against the expectation of almost everyone. The story of the woman caught in the lottery teaches a compassionate mercy scarcely revealed in the Old Testament Jewish law. 
For they took this woman to Jesus. For Jesus to exercise justice. But Jesus exercised mercy. Hallelujah. The dying thief on the cross has a lesson for us about the depth of God's mercy. But as God has demonstrated his mercy, so he exhorts us to have mercy. For blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Peter says, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another. Love as brothers, be tender hearted. Hallelujah. That is mercy though. Tender hearted and loving kindness and compassion beyond people's expectations. For you see, the God who has extended mercy through the gift of his son Jesus Christ by his death on the cross. There is no other appropriate response than to be merciful to others. The Moravian Church says, we must avoid envy, malice, revenge, strife, quarreling, and evil speaking. We must seek to be truthful and live in the spirit of peace and goodwill. Remember that lying, profane language, and other sins of the tongue are contrary to the spirit of Christ. In other words, we must not respond the way the world expects us to respond. We must exercise mercy and love it. For to exercise mercy is to love mercy, you know. That's the point. That you can't give mercy unless you love it. For mercy don't just come so. Mercy comes by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The world says, when you do me bad, I must do you bad something worse. But mercy says, no, not so. I will do as the Spirit has inspired me to. With the church, amen. amen. The third thing Micah says, not only must we act justly, and love mercy, but we must walk humbly with our God. Amazingly, when Micah raised the question, what does the Lord require of us? The first two things he says is that God, God has outlined how we are to behave toward one another. Act justly and love mercy. God expects his children to love and get along with one another. To treat one another justly and fairly. Love mercy and show kindness. But the third expectation, Micah says, is that God expects us to have a right relationship with him. With God himself. That relationship with God always begins out of humility and not arrogance. The Old Testament, remind, rather, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 reminds us. It is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not for yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. God expects us to walk humbly with him. So that for the people of God, there is no proudness about us. There is no arrogance about us. For after all, we are under the mercy of God. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we think that God owes something, you know. You know, God, God must make us happy. God must provide for us. God must do this. Sometimes, we, sometimes how we behave, we think God owes something. And yet, all God extends to us each day is the mercy from his heart. Because he cannot give to us his justice. Or he chooses not to. Humility, you see, is a trait of the child of God. And we are dangerously pursuing life if we're not humble. For Jesus says, he that exalts himself will be humbled. And he that humbles himself shall be exalted. It is a recognition that we are nothing and can do nothing without God. In other words, we must know our place. And knowing our place, it demands that we humbly 
serve God. You see, the one who is on a journey with God, the one who is on a journey with God understands that we must walk with him in humility. And that humble journey with God invites us to act justly and love mercy. So the three things we have cannot be separated from one another. They are interconnected. They are interrelated. We walk humbly with God. And the one who walks humbly with God know that God demands that we act justly and we love mercy. Moravians say that we declare Christ as head and chief elder of our church. And we hear him summoning us to follow him and pray him to use us in his service. The Moravians, Moravian church believes and declares that we expect every member to live according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That gospel that demands of us to walk humbly, to act justly, and to love mercy. We believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit to strengthen, sustain, and empower believers. So you know what? We can neither walk humbly, act justly, or love mercy out of the empowering presence of the Holy Spirit. Friends, I thank you so much for joining our program for yet another week. It was truly our privilege to have it, had you in worship with us at Covenant Moravian Church today. We just were blessed by the singing and blessed by the word and the charge from the Lord. What does the Lord require of us? Simple, act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. I look forward to hearing from you during the course of this month. Write to Covenant Moravian Church, 127 Malayans Road, Kingston 20. Email us at covenant225 at hotmail.com. Call us at 905-0105. Or visit us on our website at covenantmoravian.com. May the riches of God's love mercy and grace be upon you and your families now and forever. Shine.